Ghostbusters 2, the book of the film. Once, not so very long ago, New York was overrun with ghosts. But the Ghostbusters came to the rescue. They got rid of the ghosts by shooting them with their proton guns. And the city was safe again. People soon forgot about the ghosts. Then, they forgot about the Ghostbusters, too. Dana had often helped the Ghostbusters, but now she was busy looking after Oscar, her baby son. Oscar's dad had gone to live somewhere else, so Dana took care of the baby by herself. But one day, she went to see Egon, one of the Ghostbusters. I need your help, cried Dana. Why? asked Egon. What's wrong? The ghosts are back, said Dana. I think they've attacked Oscar. Later, all four of the Ghostbusters, Pete, Egon, Ray, and Winston, listened to Dana's story and tested Oscar for ghost damage. I pushed Oscar home in his pram, Dana said, and stopped to get my key. Suddenly, the pram went off for a ride down the street. Oh, there were cars and lorries everywhere. Some people tried to stop the pram, but it swerved out of the way. I believe it was being pushed by a you-know-what. The Ghostbusters went to the spot where Oscar's pram had stopped. Egon switched on his gigameter to test for ghost energy. Immediately, the machine started clicking wildly. There's something brewing under the street, he said. That night, the Ghostbusters decided to investigate. They dressed up as roadmen, drilled a hole, and found an old manhole cover beneath the tarmac. Underneath, an air shaft went deep down into the earth. The Ghostbusters strapped Ray into a rope harness and lowered him down the air shaft. At the bottom, Ray shone his torch and saw that he was in an old underground railway station. He flicked on his walkie-talkie and told the Ghostbusters what he could see. You must be in the old New York Pneumatic Railway, answered Egon. It was built more than a hundred years ago and then abandoned. In his torchlight, Ray saw a seething river of pink slime running past the railway platform. He put some of the slime into a slime-proof jar. Suddenly, a long, skinny arm reached up from the slime. Skeleton fingers clutched at Ray's dangling legs. The Ghostbusters dragged Ray free. But on the way up, he accidentally kicked a piece of rusty pipe onto a thick electric cable. There was a blinding flash. One by one, all the lights in New York went out. When they were discovered, the Ghostbusters were arrested and sent to court for punishment. The judge decided to send them to prison. He snarled angrily and began shouting at them. Then, Ray noticed that the slime in his jar was beginning to quiver and hiss. The more the judge shouted, the more the slime pulsed and swelled. When the jar exploded, everyone dived to safety. Out of the slime flew two terrifying apparitions, strapped into electric chairs. They struggled to get at the judge. The Scolari brothers! screamed the judge. They're dead! I sentenced them to death for murder! Now they're going to kill me! He told him that the Ghostbusters could help, as long as they weren't sent to prison. The terrified judge agreed immediately and begged them to save his life. <laughs> Using their particle throwers, the Ghostbusters cleverly kept the apparitions hovering while Ray set a proton ghost trap. 
Then Ray switched the ghost trap on, and whoosh! The ghosts were sucked in by a triangle of light energy. They disappeared forever. It was a triumph for the Ghostbusters, and there were photographs in all the newspapers. But Ray was wondering why the jar of slime had hissed and rumbled while the judge was shouting. Suddenly, he had the answer. It must be some kind of mood slime, he told the others. It behaves angrily if there is hatred in the air. I wonder how it behaves when there is love and joy. So the Ghostbusters took some mood slime and shouted at it. The slime bubbled angrily. But when they sang to it and paid it compliments, it purred like a contented cat. The Ghostbusters drove Ecto 1A to the art museum where Dana worked. While they were telling her about the mood slime, they noticed a very strange painting in the room. It's a portrait of Prince Vigo. He ruled in Carpathia hundreds of years ago. Dana told them. He was a cruel magician who put many of his people to death. Oh, I hate his picture. She added. Sometimes I think it's watching me. It was New Year's Eve, so Pete took Dana out to dinner to cheer her up. But the other Ghostbusters went back down the air shaft to find out how deep the slime was. Winston tied their measuring line to his belt. Suddenly, the slime began to rise and came licking at his boots, tugging on the line, dragging him towards the edge of the platform, pulling him into the hissing river. Egon and Ray jumped straight in after him. They wanted to save their friend. The Ghostbusters were swept along by the current into an angry whirlpool at the very end of the New York Pneumatic Railway Line. They managed to haul themselves out of the oozing slime and at last found an air shaft that took them to safety. It led to the street right outside the Museum of Art where Dana worked. Like an evil tide, the river of slime was being pulled towards the portrait of Vigo, the cruel and evil Prince of Carpathia. The Ghostbusters ripped off their slimy boots and overalls and ran to tell Pete and Dana what had happened. Unfortunately, when they arrived at the expensive restaurant, they were wearing only their long thermal underwear. The owner refused to let them stay for not wearing a tie. The Ghostbusters argued, so the owner called the police. Still arguing, the Ghostbusters were arrested and taken away. That very moment, Dana's boss, whose name was Janosch, was repainting a damaged part of Prince Vigo's portrait. Suddenly, the painting began to spit fire. Then it seemed to melt, and Vigo's cruel face came to life and spoke to Janosch. For two hundred years I have waited, but when midnight strikes, a swelling foam of evil will burst upon the city. At that moment, I shall be reborn into the body of a child. A child? Said Janosch, falling under Vigo's spell. Bring me a baby so that I might live again, Vigo commanded. And Janosch remembered that Dana had a baby boy. As soon as Dana got home, she went to peep at her baby, but his cot was empty and the window was open. Outside, on a ledge high above the street, stood Oscar. He seemed to be waiting for someone. A 
And in the night sky, a ghostly nanny suddenly appeared. She scooped the baby into her pram and disappeared, smiling into thin air. But Dana had recognized the nanny's face. Janosch! Dana's babysitters were old friends, Louis Tully and Janine Melnitz. Dana asked them to tell the Ghostbusters what had happened while she went to the museum. She thought that Janosch would take Oscar there, and she wanted to rescue her baby. She pushed her way through the people gathering in the square to welcome the new year and crept into the museum. At that moment, the evil slime burst from its hiding place below the city and covered the building. It looked like an enormous blancmange. The slime hardened into a crust. No one could get in, no one could get out. Hundreds of people called the police about the slime. One woman said that a few drops fell onto her fur coat, which then bit her and ran away. A huge monster appeared in a city park, and the harbor patrol reported that the Titanic had sailed into port. It's the Titanic! At last, the police released the Ghostbusters, and Lewis told them what had happened. It was impossible to get inside the museum, but Pete had a brainwave. We must use the mood slime, he said. We have to find something good and strong to match Vigo's evil. But what? cried Egon. The Statue of Liberty, replied Pete. The Ghostbusters climbed inside the great statue and wired an electro-proton system to its steel frame. Then they coated the inside of the statue with mood slime and switched on. Giving a mighty shudder, the statue slowly came to life. Her nose twitched and she frowned. It seemed that she could smell the evil in her beloved city. Then, with the Ghostbusters riding inside her crown, she strode up the East River and headed for the museum. The people cheered as the Statue of Liberty passed by, and their mood of joy melted the crust of slime. The great statue had no time for doors, she shattered the museum's great glass dome with one mighty blow of her torch. The Ghostbusters swarmed down just as Vigo stepped out from his canvas to seize Oscar. Happy New Year! cried Winston and squirted Vigo with his particle thrower. There was a blinding burst of light and the magician gave a scream of rage. Then, he simply faded away. Afterwards, the Statue of Liberty returned, smiling, to her harbor. The city was full of happy people. Dana was safe, Oscar had been rescued, Janosch recovered from the evil spell, and the wicked Vigo had gone forever. The Ghostbusters had done it again.